You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. Christian Speak Talk Radio is a non-profit ministry. We are dedicated to spreading the gospel of Jesus through our programs and special guests. We exist through the generous support of our listeners. If you are being blessed through this ministry and would like to give a love offering, go to our website and click on our donation page. Your donation will be processed through PayPal. Our prayer is that you may prosper, be in good health, even as your soul prospers. When Christian Speak Talk Radio is a 501c3 nonprofit ministry. So all of your gifts to this ministry are tax deductible. So go out to our website, www.whenchristianspeak.com, and click on our donation page. The love of Jesus has changed my life. I've seen his beauty and heard his word. Now I worship at the feet of Christ to redeemed me with his own Thank you. 
Hallelujah. Glory to your name, O God. You are worthy to be praised. This is Adoration Sunday service. I'm Mac, and you said, wait a minute. Um, where's Myra? <laughs> Just want to let you know that she's fine. A little bit of a cold that she's dealing with. And um, we gave her this Sunday off just so that she can rest, that the Lord can touch her, heal her, deliver her, make her free, holy, and acceptable in his sight so that the next time we see her publicly, she'll be ready to break open the word in the manner that only the Lord uh, has provided for her. She is my heart. She's my life. Um, we're getting close to um, being married for five years now. And uh, we're looking forward to that grace. Uh, we know that from scripture that his grace is sufficient. And uh, through many uh, obstacles, challenges, all types of things, uh, we stand united as husband and as wife. And I don't think either one of us would change a thing about that. So again, we thank you, uh, oh Lord, for just your provision, for just loving us and, and providing for us. And, and I want to let you know that I'm loving you guys as well. So um, as many of you know, uh, we have been in Olympic season, the Tokyo Olympics to be uh, exact and precise. And, you know, the artistry and the physicality of the many athletes that are literally sharing their talents before the world it's just been amazing. And, you know, we probably look at a portion of the Olympics each and every night. And um, we have marveled at the incredible feats that are being done in this country and also um, the, our other neighboring countries as well. But at the end of the day, um, the Olympics is about athletic excellence, and we understand as people that may or may not be athletic that what we are witnessing is something that's really incredible. And so um, I just marvel at, you know, just the talent, the exceptional gifts that the human body possesses. And I have to always look to God as being the source of everything. So it's just amazing that when you take an athlete and that athlete dedicates his or her ability and, you know, through training and through going to different events or meets and getting better, getting stronger, getting more proficient at their athletic skill. It is just a beautiful thing to witness. And with the Olympics in particular, because this is an opportunity that only happens normally every four years, because of course uh, with the uh, coronavirus, it's actually skipped five years. So, you know, many of the people that we're witnessing now are part of this greater effort of training, of going to different events, being victorious in some, maybe having setbacks in others, and they work and work and work, and they have to go through qualifying trials just to be able to walk into Olympic Stadium. And so I know you guys are saying, wait a minute, isn't this like 
uh, a gospel program, and it is. And I'm making a point because I think it's so critical that I share what I'm getting ready to share. And I'm going to say right now that it may or may not be so popular, but let me just uh, up front let you know that nothing that I'm going to say here today is going to be critical of a particular athlete. I'm looking at more the situation around this circumstance. So let me not just, uh, uh, you know, just procrastinate. Let's just get to it. The big news this week after all the victories, all the gold medals and swimming and other activities um, was Simone Biles. And, and you guys know, normally, I don't even throw names out there, uh, you know, because we usually don't deal with personalities or anything like this. But in this case, I'm going to use her name because there has been a back and forth about why she could not participate in the team activities and even the all around uh, activities. And right now we don't even know if she is going to actually participate in the final uh, individual uh, program coming up later this week. So I don't want to get into what's right or what's wrong. I just want to talk about what is. And so what is, is that we've seen an athlete who has been self-identified even as the GOAT. And for you all that don't know what the GOAT means, it just means greatest of all time. And I believe that Simone actually wears that uh, signature on a lot of her apparel. And you know what? Statistically, I believe that she is, in gymnastics, the greatest of all time. So again, no shade is being thrown in her direction. But we have had a lot of back and forth in the news and social media about whether the move that she made uh, to take herself out of competition for mental reasons. You know, everybody's questioning, you know, uh, there's one side that says, well, you know, we don't ever want to judge anybody by their uh, mental challenges, mental uh, abilities or lack of abilities. And the last thing that we want to do is to get into anyone's head. We understand in gymnastics in particular, um, you are doing some incredible things at some incredible heights. And with uh, Simone Biles in particular, uh, she does some very, very intricate routines that are not the norm. They are literally mind-blowing and spectacular. And we want to give it up to her because, my God, my God, how many of us can do what she's doing? But you do have a contingent of people that, in spite of all that, oh, they're going to say, well, you know what? Um, this is a team thing that she walked away from. And what about the team? What about the others? What about the other three that worked just as hard in order to get to Olympic Stadium to be able to compete and prayerfully obtain the gold medal? We know in that particular event, uh, it turned out that the United States got the silver medal. And, you know, we applaud even that, especially under the circumstances. You know, so, I mean, I could go on and on about whether that was the right thing to do, wrong thing to do. Again, that's not the intent 
of what we're trying to do here. So there's another side that says, well, you know what? Um, that's like being in a competition and in the middle of the competition, you just quit. You know, we're just looking at A and B. You know, you showed up, you said you were going to compete, you didn't go through the process, and now you're out. So we could go back and forth. You know, I've heard everything from comparing that to uh, the tennis player, Naomi Osaka. I'm really into sports, so I, I, I really keep all this stuff in my head. Um, and what she did um, and, and then ended up not even uh, going to Wimbledon. We can also, uh, some things I've heard, have compared this to Michael Jordan having to take two years away from basketball to play baseball, basically to get his head straight. Uh, basically, uh, because of the pressure of his notoriety, but also the death of his father. And I'm saying death with the murder of his father. We know for Simone Biles that she is also dealing with something stressful outside of elet uh, athletics, excuse me, which was, you know, uh, violations sexually uh, from a uh, guy, uh, Nasser, you know, it, who violated many young women. And so all of these things building up to pressure, 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 social media, you know, you can't make a mistake. You can't say a wrong thing without being publicly ridiculed, <clears throat> excuse me, guys, and having to deal with what we call cancel culture, which is basically, oh, I'm with you till I'm not with you. And once I'm not with you, you're canceled. So again, you know, there's a lot of things going on. And again, I'm not even the most qualified to talk about these things specifically. I'm again, speaking more to the atmosphere around it because I talked about that word pressure, but we also have other words that can come into this depression, anxiety. And those are the two that I think of as well. You know, the pressure to always succeed, the pressure to always win, the pressure, you know, if you gain a few pounds, all of a sudden social media is attacking you. If you lose too much weight, no one's satisfied. So we all deal with these things, but when you are a celebrity, and especially a celebrity in athletics, all of these things get magnified. Now, my wife and I, this week, we have talked about this in more detail. And we, you know, we both have our opinions on it, which again, for purposes of what we're about to share here, is not that important. What is important is, is that you don't have to be an athlete in order to deal with pressure. You don't have to be a movie star or a musician and, 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 and somehow think you're immune to getting away from pressure or depression or anxiety. I want to tell you a quick story, and I think I'm okay in, in, in sharing this, because this is really my mom's story. So my mom right now is definitely dealing with a mental issue. It's really magnified now, um, um, you know, to the point where basically 
she can she knows what she wants to say but she really can't say it so it, it really makes it hard to communicate and to express and i can't even imagine how frustrating that is for any individual not to be able to actually express their feelings their desires their uh victories their their defeats you know all of these things it's what the human condition is the thing is though is that my mom was dealing with these type of things way before she was diagnosed with her current issue and i would go with her sometimes uh when she went to see the doctor dealing with anxiety i can say that much dealing with anxiety you know always you know just who um my mom is a bundle of energy anyway and when she becomes anxious it just multiplies incredibly and so as i began to take her to doctor's appointments and things of that nature i began to understand that particular issue and of course because you're going to a medical physician they're going to prescribe a medication and so i started to think about that because you know this is not going to be a thing where we bash the medical profession because you know what the medical profession is here by permission and authority of God himself and physicians do great things hey look guys i have a scar going down my chest right now because in 2017 i had triple bypass surgery and i thank dr charles shorts who was my surgeon because without him i don't know if i would be here now so i again i don't want to in any way show any type of haterade towards the medical profession however when we allow for medication to act as our salvation we have problems i'm i'm telling you it, it will not work when we judge ourselves based on the latest comment coming out of social media it's not good no one could be able to handle that type of pressure so uh, don't 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 miss miss crew what i'm saying pressure is real and we all in some form of fashion have had to deal with it you know even my doctors have said when i had my triple bypass when i had bell's palsy when i had a stomach ulcer the same because mac it is just so much going on you got to release it and i thought i was but honestly i really wasn't doing it at all and so my mom getting back to her she heard me preach one time and this is many many years ago and i was preaching out of the book of philippians chapter 4 and you know it it talks about being anxious for nothing but everything by prayer supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto god and then it says something really interesting it says and the peace of god that passes all understanding show guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus I preached that specifically many years ago thinking about my mom 
because I realized that we do need medication. Look here, guys. I have every little ailment that most people of my culture have, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and diabetes. Got all three, the, the trifecta. I had them. And my doctor, my current doctor, has tried to wean me off of certain medications or at least reduce the medications. And, you know, it just hasn't worked for me. However, what I have discovered is that, yes, I must take this medication, but many times we're not taking the medication that really needs to be taken. And that medication is uh, prescribed by Dr. Jesus. And I, th I thought about it and thought about it. You know, we, we say, you know, Lay aside all your burdens. I'll follow you. Um, but do we really? Do we really lay aside every sin or every weight that would so easily beset us so that we can run this race with patience? It's easier said than done. And I had to check myself because I thought I was living it, y'all. I thought it. But I realized in retrospect, I really wasn't because I was still relying on self in order to be able to overcome things. And I wasn't laying it at the foot of Christ Jesus. And I'm saying this because when I thought about this recent thing with Simone Biles, once I kind of got through all of the back and forth. She was right. She was wrong. She was this. She was that. I had to slow my own roll, and I had to consider, you know what? What if Sister Biles is just like everybody else who just thought that maybe medication could do the trick. And we forgot that we have to have a spiritual component to come in in order to assure that we are treating every aspect of any anxiety because we might even know what it is that makes us anxious. But how many of us know what the core issue and why that particular thing or a particular person is the cause of so much stress. And I really had to pray about it. And honestly, I was um, ministering to our seniors earlier today, and I was coming from the same passage not using the Olympics, but just using something else as my introduction to it. And I thought about it, and, and so I had to break it down. It, you know, it talks about be anxious for nothing. So right there, the writer is telling us that we need to just get over it. Sometimes we need to get over ourselves, because sometimes we're the cause of our own stress our own anxiety. And we had to stop maybe taking ourselves so seriously. It's, you know what? Guess what? Even in ministry, it's actually okay to laugh. It's okay, okay to have a joke. It's okay to have fun. You know, you can do that. There's no sin in joy. And so the writer says, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, and not some things, not a few things, but everything, by prayer. And what is prayer? At the core of it, it is just a communication between you and God by way of Jesus Christ. Think about Jesus Christ as being your editor. So you might have a whole bunch to say 
Jesus edits through the minutia so that God hears the real issue. And so we pray and the Bible tells us to pray without ceasing. And so what does that mean? So does that mean that we're perpetually on our knees, you know, in the traditional sense of praying? And I say, no, but we live a prayerful existence. You get in the car. Thank you, Lord God, for the car. Thank you, Lord God, that when I cranked the engine, it, 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 it turned over. Thank you, Lord God, that I was able to come home and no one was injured. Nobody had an accident on, on my watch. There's so many things that we can be perpetually in prayer for. You know, when you see a baby take his or her first steps, that's something to be prayerful about. When people have lost loved ones, we pray. When we are dealing with loved ones who are at the brink of death, we pray. When people are victorious in their careers or in their pursuits, we pray. And then we pray, and we also have supplication. And I love that word. You know, whenever we get into those four-syllable words, you know, I got to break them, break them out. And when I think about supplication, at the core of that word is the word supply. Automatically made me think, well, God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. But in that supplication, we have to literally supply prayer support for our neighbors, our families, our friends. Guess what, y'all? Even our enemies. And when I thought about that, so we're praying, and then we're praying for others. And then the next part, we have to do it with Thanksgiving. And I joked around with my seniors and I said, well, you know what? My thoughts about Thanksgiving remind me of sitting down on Thanksgiving day, eating my food of choice. And by the way, guys, it's not necessarily turkey, but whatever that is, I think about that spread of food that is laid on the table and how, you know, mostly women, but some men are up all night long cooking for the family so that the family can come together in Thanksgiving. I'm not going to go into the, 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 the Native Americans and the pilgrims because a lot of that history is really not true. <laughs> but the, the core value of it is very important and it's biblical because even Jesus himself gathered his disciples around the table when he knew that his time was coming close to an end in the natural. And so we break bread together in fellowship with thanksgiving. But the thanksgiving that's talked about in Philippians, it's a thanksgiving of just the very presence of God in everything that we do. The setbacks, the victories, everything in between. We're thankful because no matter what we are going through, there's somebody else that's going through much worse. And because they are going through much worse, if we were to focus on them as opposed to our own issues, I guarantee you, you would find out that by comparison, your issues really aren't as great as you thought they were. And our Lord and Savior will always give you a way of escape if you trust him. And so we are to not be anxious for anything, but in prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, we let our requests be made known unto God. 
In other words, we need to have a little talk sometimes. And it just, you know, you know how the, the, the songwriter said, have a little talk with Jesus. Tell them all about your problems. And tell them all about your concerns and your victories as well. In other words, in the same manner that we can have conversation one with another, we should be having a conversation with God on a daily basis. You know, Adam gives us an example before the fall. You know, he is walking in the garden in the cool of day and the voice of God is with him. And so I can't even imagine just Adam at that point and the Lord just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, having that kind of connection. Well, you know what? You can actually have that. You can actually have that. You step up your prayer life. And that's not just the traditional, I want to look holy, so I'm going to pray. And I'm going to make pronunciations that are, you know, churchy. No, we're talking about constant communication with our creator, who is our father in heaven. That's a prayer life, y'all. Let's not make this thing more complicated than it has to be. And I thought about it and I said, man, you know what? If athletes, if, you know, entertainment, people in entertainment, people in athletics, people that do public speaking, if these people would tap into the real power, not the energy that many of these charlatans talk about where it's coming from some new age source, you know, you know, or be the best that you can be, you know, where your God ends up being within you as if you are God, you know, but if we would tap into the real source of our strength, which is given to us by way of the Holy Spirit, then maybe some of those anxious moments would subside. And maybe, to be honest with you, it might be a process that will take a lot of time, or at least some time, in order to overcome. But we know that we can overcome because you know what? Christ himself has overcome the world. And so anyway, it says to let your request be made known unto God. Now, what I shared with my seniors earlier is that when the prayers go up, it's kind of like um, a SOS. You know how people draw a SOS in the sand when they're stranded and they need to be rescued? It could be a smoke signal to specify that I need help. Well, that's what the prayer is. And what happens is, is that that smoke signal is recognized by God. The aroma of that smoke signal is absorbed by God. And God, because he loves us so much, has to respond to our cry. So if we draw nigh to him, the word of God says he will draw nigh to us. And that's what it's all about. So the payoff of these verses that I'm sharing with you is then, and the peace of God that passes all understanding. What is this peace? What is this peace based on? It's based on God. Godly peace. Peace that can overcome any storm, any obstacle, any challenge, any demonic spirit, any evil, anything. God's peace. It will confound the world because they'll say, my God, Sister Sonia, why in the world are you so calm in the midst of this storm that you're going through? And Sister Sonia can say, well, you know what? I have the peace of God. Not peace, P-I-E-C-E, but P-E-A-C, 
E. Peace. Peace that passes all understanding. The world can't understand why you haven't fallen apart. In fact, the world don't understand how you can still be alive, but God and his peace that passes all understanding. It guards your heart and mind. Look here, guys. We know that scripture tells us in Romans that we need to no longer be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your conscious really is talking about your soul. Okay, so that peace will guard that mind. I was talking to um, my seniors, you know, my seniors, they bring out the best. So we were talking about how we're supposed to get dressed in the morning. People say, well, you know, clothes. But no, we're not talking about clothes here. We're talking about spiritual. So, you know, I started talking about some of the items. You know, that belt of truth. And the one I really love, the shoes for the preparation of the gospel of peace. I love that. All right. Um, you know, it talks about the, uh, the, the, the shield of faith. But the ones I wanted to talk about is three of them was the helmet of salvation. And isn't it interesting that in the spiritual sense of us getting clothed, that our minds, our soul, our conscience is covered by the helmet of salvation. And salvation is a gift of God. Not anything that we could do, lest we would boast about it. It is his gift to us. And then I thought about another piece of that equipment to get dressed was the breastplate of righteousness. And I said, well, wait a minute. That breastplate of righteousness protects your heart, your natural heart, your spiritual heart. And so, symbolically, God has provided those, for those two areas when he's talking about his peace. It guards the mind and the heart. And we know that without God, our hearts are despicable. They are just horrible. There's nothing good in our hearts without Christ. But with Christ, he does another transformational thing. It's like he goes in and does surgery to weed out all of the negative, all of the haterade, all of the evil, all of the paganism. He takes it out surgically so that we can have a a clean heart and renewed spirit in him. And I thought about it. My God, what if we could actually convince the entertainment community, the sports community, the professional community, the low income community, in other words, everybody. If we could just tell everybody that they just need to have that talk with Jesus and allow the peace of God to operate in their lives. By doing this, huh, it will blow the mind of the world around us when they see a Christian walking down the street they say I don't know how they survived but we can say it is the peace of God that did it for us and it can do it for you all this week I've been having interaction publicly 
with people that have had different types of concerns. Some of them have been medical. Some of them have been <laughs> a little more psychological. But, you know, at the end of the day, we're all dealing with something. Simone Biles is dealing with something. That's something in athletics. There are two different uh, terminologies that I want to bring up. The main one that uh, is kind of like synonymous with anybody in athletics is the yips. And the yips simply means that it's like something that you've done since you were a, a toddler, you know, and, and like you know your sport, your craft, your your music ability. You, you, you've been doing it for so long, you can do it in your sleep. But all of a sudden, it's like mentally something blocks that. And all of a sudden, it's like you don't even know, you know, what I'm tapping here, which is the C note. You know, all of a sudden, you don't even know what that is. And could you imagine Simone Biles uh, being up, up as high as they go, doing these uh, flip somersaults, and all of a sudden, not even knowing why am I up here. So I'm not making fun of that at all. But what I am saying is that, oh, and by the way, in gymnastics, they call it the twisties. Okay, same concept. You just get lost. I remember, I can't think of him by name off the top of my head right now, but there was a, a baseball player not all that long ago that just simply could not function any longer. And it was sad because he was really good. These things happen all the time. They happen outside of athletics, outside of entertainment. They happen with individuals. That sometimes it's just like things get murky. And this is why instead of focusing on, oh, she let us down, or you know what, she was brave, Wherever you stand on that, that's wherever you stand. But the more important thing is let's pray that she can get to the source of why that is going on and that she could do that and would do that through Christ Jesus. Because as far as I'm concerned, that is the only way that she is going to be able to recover. Whether it's athletics, athletics, you know, she's already 24 years old. What she does in her sport doesn't last that long anyway. What's more important is how this young woman is going to function in life. And so we should pray for her. I even forgot that lesson this week. I'm, I'm being straight with you. But we should pray for her. We should pray for everyone because that's how we get to this place of peace. And all of these things, praying, supplication, with thanksgiving, we let our requests be made known unto God and his peace that passeth all understanding shall guard or keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by him. I don't care what they're saying out here. I don't care how they refute Christianity. I don't care what hate rate they drop on it. We need to be strong enough to be able to profess that because believe it or not, that's the beginning of your real peace because his peace keeps me. Peace be still. And sometimes we just have to stand still in order for his peace to really be activated in our lives. Guys, I love you. I love you. It took longer than I thought I was, but I'm praying that this, this message was on point. But honestly, guys, only through Christ Jesus can we operate in the peace that can only come by way of 